So today we're going to talk about finding volumes of solids with known cross sections, which is what this thing right here is. Uh, we'll talk about it later. It's a pretty complicated looking looking piece, but not so bad. Another example of that sort of shape is this one here. Yeah, beautiful rotational beauty of it. It's an object with a circular base. It's a slightly different shape because the cross sections in this guy are triangles. Is it triangle? Thickness. If we were actually doing this, we'd use infinitely small triangles, laminate them all together, and make this shape. So, today what we're going to learn about is how we find the volume of solids with known cross sections. There you have it. Little video. Don't know if you can hear the volume on that one. We'll work on that. I'm trying to get extra high tech for you. So, as we're working our way through, a typical sort of problem that we'll encounter is something like this one. It says find the volume of the solid whose base is the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals x plus 2. And the cross sections that are perpendicular to the x axis are squares. So, if we look at this, there's y equals x plus 2, there's y equals x squared. What's going to happen is we're going to have a bunch of these square looking things coming up. I can't make it happen with the arrow, come up out of the base. But essentially, there's my y equals x squared, there's my y equals x, or x plus 2, I think is what it said. And picture a bunch of squares coming up. And as, we, as, the, as the difference gets wider, the squares get bigger. Over here, the square is smaller. Over here, we have a really teeny tiny square, and then the back side, they get smaller again as we get closer to that intersection piece. Okay, so picture squares coming up out of this, okay? So right where that line is drawn, I'd have a square. Or over here, I'd have a square. Bunches of squares, infinitely thin square. So what we need to do to be able to figure out how to um, find, the, find the volume of that region is first we have to find out what the area of a square is, okay, or the area of one square. So what we need to know is what's this length right here? This length right here is just the difference between these two curves. So the length of this one side is going to be x plus 2 minus x squared. Okay? Does that make sense? That that, would be, that, that that would be that way. If I know the length of this side, this side is also going to be x plus 2 minus x squared. And thus the area of that particular little rectangle right here, or a square even, the area of this square is just going to be x plus 2 minus x squared, quantity squared, okay? So typically when we're working any kind of volume problem, we start with finding the area of whatever the representative slice is. In this case, it's a square. Then we figure out the area. If we know the area, we can get the volume pretty much of a, of a piece just by multiplying it by the thickness. Okay, so the area times the thickness gives me the volume. Uh, typically, we're going to use delta x as our thickness of the slice. This particular slice doesn't have any real thickness, nor do these. You know, they've got the thickness of a slice of paper, but not that much thickness there. Um, typically, you know, we'll use delta x, and we'll get a little further. So, if we want to find the volume of all of them, we just add up all these little, all these little volume slices, and the way we accomplish up adding up a bunch of smaller pieces is with the integral. So we're going to integrate this function 
x plus 2 minus x squared squared dx, and the delta x turned into a dx because we get infinitely thin, uh, the only thing we haven't really figured out is my points of intersection. We can get to that really, 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 really quickly just by saying when is x squared equal to x plus 2, or when is x squared minus x minus 2 equal to 0. Quick factoring, x minus 2, x plus 1 gives me x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So we're going to integrate that function from negative 1 to positive 2. That'll get us the volume that we're looking for. I don't know that I'm actually going to calculate the volume on this one. You've got the calculators. You can actually do this. It's not, you know, this is just basically monkey work at this point um, to, to do this. So we'll just move into finding out what the answer is. You can try that if you like to get the answer. But really what we're worried about today is this is the setup. Okay, makes sense. Let's move on to a, another sort of example, or if it doesn't make sense, slow down, try to cut out the gibberish portion of what I'm talking about, and get to the full thing. But ultimately, figure out what a slice looks like. Looks like a square. Find the area of the square. Multiply by thickness to get volume. Add up all the volumes with an integral. That's going to give me the total volume. As we move to another example, there's a picture. There's the bigger graph. Now, looking at a different curve. So this time, volume of solid, the base is the region bounded by y equals x squared, which is this, x equals 0, which is right there, x equals 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is right there, and the x-axis. So we're looking at just this region right here. This time, the cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. So this is the wonder of my fantastic graphics. What that looks like is I've got a bunch of semicircles, half circles, slicing up out of the out of the paper to make a three-dimensional object. Uh, we have smaller circles as we get closer and closer to the to the origin here. They get I think that's actually the largest one. It's at five, but they'd be somewhere in between. But that's the general idea. So we've got semicircles coming out. Um, so we need to find out what's the area of a semicircle. Okay. Um, what we know about the area of a circle is the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of a semicircle, f pi r squared. Uh, it's not necessarily all that convenient a formula at this point because I don't know if I want to figure out what the radius is. I could get a pretty good handle on the diameter of this, of this piece, right? Um, the diameter is equal to twice the radius. So it turns out, and I'm just going to write down what it is, the area is going to be pi d squared over 4, and we still got the half. Okay, take a second to think about why that why that is, knowing that radius is one half the diameter. So if I take the radius squared, I get d squared over four. That's what that turns out to be. Okay, it'll be nicer because this right here is the diameter, which let's get out some color so we can see what's going on. If this is my diameter, the diameter is the thing that's sitting right here. Okay, if we go back to that picture right there. That's my diameter, that blue piece right there. So, diameter is, in this case, well, it's just x squared. It's kind of nice. So, this is x squared. That's my diameter. So, if I want to find the area of a single slice, I'm going to make this 1 8 pi d squared. Okay? That's the area of my semicircle to get to a volume. I am just going to multiply by the thickness, in this case pi, make that x to the fourth, times delta x. That gets me the volume of one of these slices, and I don't want the volume of one slice, I want all the slices, so to get the total volume, I'm going to integrate, and in this case, we've got the limits, we're going to integrate from 0 to 5, and we're integrating 1 8 pi x to the fourth dx. Let's do this one. This will be easy enough to deal with. The 1 8 pi is going to come out of my way. So really I'm just integrating x to the 4th, which is x to the 5th over 5. Definite integral, evaluated at 5, and at 0. The 0 part is going to be nice because it's going to drop out. So we're just going to end up with 1 8 pi times 5 to the 5th 
over 5, which is going to be 5 to the 4th, which is 625, right? 625, so it turns out to be 625 over 8 pi on that one. Okay? So again, same story, figure out what the cross-section looks like, in this case semicircles, figure out how to find the area of the cross-section. Once we know the area, multiply by thickness, how thick the slice is to get volume. Once I know one volume, I can add them all up with an integral to get the total volume. Okay? One more problem. It's a little more difficult. There's that picture. There's that picture. Now onto this picture here. I'm going to pause and check my time, see where I'm at. Okay, great. 10 minutes and 44 seconds. Let's see what we can do here. All right, so back to the same picture. This is what it looks like. Here's my crude representation. Okay, it's an equilateral triangle this time. This one's a little more difficult to deal with because we've got to do some work to get to the point where we know what this, uh, what, how to find the area of this piece. All right, pause for a second while you were gone. I put some extra stuff in. Here's the blue slice. That blue slice represents the this base of the equilateral triangle. So the length of this side, just like it was in the first problem, is going to be the difference between those two curves. So it's x plus 2 minus x squared. In order to find the area of a triangle, we all know the area of a triangle, 1 half base times height. Okay, so the base is this. The height, however, not quite so clear. So we've got to realize that this being an equilateral triangle, the 60, 60, 60, I can take half of it and get myself a 60, 30, 90 triangle, right? And if we remember, the way this thing works is that this, these sides go in the ratio of 1, 2, root 3, okay? The problem is this side length is this thing, okay? It's the whole thing, and here we're just looking at about half of it, okay? So if this is a half, then this is 2 times a half, which is 1, and this is root 3 times a half. So my height is root 3 times a half of whatever the base is. So my height turns out to be root 3 over 2 times x plus 2 minus x squared. So to figure out the area, I'm going to do 1 half the base, which is this thing here, times the height, which is this thing here. So let's see if we can get to a place in a minute or so of how to do this. The area is one half the base x plus two minus x squared times the height, which is root three over two times x plus two squared. Okay, I'm gonna go a little extended page. That's really awful, but we'll go with it. Um, try to simplify this a little bit. This turns out to be root three over four times x plus two minus x squared squared. Okay, see where all of this stuff turns into that stuff. That's the area. If I want a volume, I take all that stuff and I multiply by delta x. If I want an it, the, the total volume, this is the volume of the slice, the total volume, I'm going to integrate. And I'm going to integrate this thing right here, root 3 over 4 x plus 2 minus x squared squared dx. We're going to use the same upper and lower limit that we used before, which is negative 1 and positive 2. We're going to integrate from and down a little bit more, negative 1 to positive 2. Again, I probably jumped to my calculator on this one, or you certainly can do this out. What you have to remember to do is expand this whole thing out before you went to a, before you started to integrate it. So this is a case where the calculator is certainly going to be faster and easier. That'll give, get us some sort of a volume. That'll be the volume of this shape right here. And I think I showed you that piece of picture filling in all of this area with triangles and we get some sort of a solid. Okay, hope that made some sense to you. Take a look at it again, see where we are. Thanks for watching. Hey, kept uh, 24 more seconds. Cool. I'll uh, vamp for 11 of them. So, see you tomorrow. Hope this is working out for you.